Hi, this is Dr. Don, and I have a problem out of the McClave text in my STET lab. It's problem 7.4.45, and I have just the problem statement here. Let's read this closely and see if we can understand what the question is about and how we go about answering the question. It says that we have a professor at a local university, did a survey, 120 businesses, so that's our N, 120, to determine what motivates small businesses to export their products. The CEOs were asked to respond to a statement, management believes the business can achieve economies of scale by exporting on a scale of one strongly disagree to five strongly agree. That's a Likert-like scale. We're given summary statistics, again our N of 120. We're given scores and we're given a single mean X bar 3.76 so that's got to be the sample mean and we're given a standard deviation of 1.2 which again must be the sample standard deviation. The professor hypothesized that if the true mean scale score exceeds 3.5 then CEOs at all businesses in the city generally agree with the statement that businesses can achieve economies of scale by exporting. Alrighty, so what, what do we have here? Well, we've got a single sample, and it's a large sample. N is greater than 30. We've got an N of 120, so we've got a single sample, large sample. It's a single mean. So that tells me that this is a test of hypotheses for a single mean large sample. Because it's a large sample and it's a mean, that tells me we can use the z-test to do this hypothesis test. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to state our null and alternative hypothesis. That's a critical step and if you mess the, that step up you're going to miss the problem. Let's look at this problem again. Scanning there we see the professor hypothesize that the true mean scale exceeds 3.5. Keyword exceeds. If we look at this table that I've uh, prepared and uh, have on my uh, blog post um, we're looking for these keywords that we convert words to simples math math operators. And looking through here, I see exceeds is down here in this lower left corner, and that tells me that's a greater than symbol in the alternative, and that points to the right. So this is a right tail test. My alternative is that the mean mu exceeds, I mean, excuse me, it's greater than 3.5. The complement has to be a form of equality. The null has to be a form of equality. That means it's less than or equal or shown either way with the uh, two types of operators. This is the Excel operator and this is what you would see in most other software. I brought up the way that the problem in my stat lab presents the uh, choices for you. And looking at these, uh, the thing that jumps out at me, none of the nulls have a less than or equal. It's either an equality or there's one that's got a uh, inequality, which we know that cannot be the, the correct answer. Uh, why is that? Well, Clave, like some authors and, and most uh, statistical software, always shows the null as a form of, uh, of a pure equality. The reason for that, and we're not going to get into the math, but if you run the hypothesis test for the null equals 3.5 and it is significant, it would also be significant for any value less than 3.5. So that's the reason that the correct answer here is choice D, mu equal 3.5 for the null, mu greater than 3.5 for the alternative. Okay, I've opened StatCrunch, and let's solve this thing. We're going to go with Stat, which is always the uh, smartest place to go when you're trying to figure out what to do. 
There's Z stats. We know this is a Z test. It's a one sample and we have summary data. And we open up this dialog box and the first thing we have to put in there is a sample mean. That's X equal X bar 3.76. All right, now we've got to put in the standard deviation. And here is where StatCrunch can trip you up. We're given the sample standard deviation S. And if you remember, in theory, and if you're doing step-by-step -step in Excel, creating this as you go, you have to modify the S in order to get sigma sub X bar, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So we would take 1.2 and divide that by the square root of n if you're doing this manually. But StatCrunch does that calculation for you. If you manually adjust it to get sigma sub x bar, you're going to get the wrong answer. So what you need to do in StatCrunch is just enter in the sample standard deviation 1.2. Our sample size is 120. Now we've got to enter in our null hypothesis which is 3.5 and if you notice there in StatCrunch as I mentioned just shows the equality form of the null. Our alternative is a right tail so I get select the greater than 3.5 and our alpha it is 0.95. We don't need to set that for this test. I just would call to your attention again, if you're looking for the confidence interval around this sample mean, you would just select that. But anyway, we've, we've got it set up. We click on Compute down here, and we get our answer. We have a Z statistic, our test statistic, of 2.37, which I recall was the answer that they asked for. And we've got a p-value of 0 .009, 0 0.0088, rounds to 0 0.009. To finish up on the problem, we have a p-value of 0 0.009, which is less than the the significance level alpha of 0 0.05. Therefore, we reject the null and support the alternative. There is sufficient evidence to include the true mean exceeds 3.5, which is our alternative. Part B, explain why the results of the study, although statistically significant, may not be practically significant. Now this student selected the results may not be practically significant because alpha is 0.05. Well, yes and no. You know, obviously if you had an alpha of 0.01, or 0 0.001, which many researchers do today, then you might feel a little more confident about whether or not you really have a real difference. Remember, there's some probability that we are rejecting unfairly the null. But in this case, the best answer is that the effect size is really not that big. You know, our mean is 3.76, and as it says here, Remember, we've got a Likert-like scale, 1 to 5, so these are really integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and people have to select either 3 or 4. We're saying it's still in between 3 and 4, so that's why this may not be practically significant. The final question is, this sample may not be normally distributed, which is true. You don't really know. But remember, with the central limit theorem, if we've got a sample size greater than 30, then that distribution really doesn't matter. And here we've got a sample size greater than 30, so it really doesn't matter if the sample is not normally distributed. So I hope this helps.